Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Yadi. I am the owner and artist here at Lily Moon Vintage, where I paint furniture to help fund our journey of starting a family through IVF. With that said, I want to say a gigantic thank you, like a huge thank you to all of you that took the time not only to watch my video, but to comment, to send me encouraging words, to share your own personal experiences. Everything was just so... I mean, I was so emotional all week just reading everything with my husband and you guys do not understand how much it means to me. Just all the love and support that you guys have shown me this far. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm not going to get emotional. I'm already like, yeah, I'm already tearing up. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for everything. Um, let's talk about furniture. I built my base, you guys. I built my first furniture base and I am so excited to show you guys how I did it. I've been wanting to do one of these for such a long time and then my girl Katie from Salvage by K. Scott did one and it just pushed me and inspired me and encouraged me to actually do one and I'm so happy that I did because I definitely see a lot more pieces in the near future that are going to have custom built bases by Yadi at Lily Moon Vintage. <laughs> so anyways, thank you guys again for watching this video. Um, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you have not subscribed already. That does help my channel out tremendously and it's going to help me get closer to our goal. So hope you enjoy this video. Let me know if you have any questions below, of course, like usual, and I will reply back in the comments. So my husband and I found a dresser and nightstand set on Facebook Marketplace and when I saw it I knew immediately that I was going to want to attempt to build my own wood base especially because this one had a lot of water damage at the bottom but it's still small enough where I knew that if I was going to build a wood base I wouldn't be too overwhelmed. So the top does have a lot of damage, but we're going to make all the repairs to that um, in just a second. I'm going to start off by measuring the frame of the piece so I know exactly what measurements I need to cut my wood at for the wooden base. So now that I have my measurements done, I want to talk to you guys about a fun app that I found that made this so much easier for me to do. I always rely on my husband to help me with measurements, but in this case, I was able to find this app called Feet and Inches. And all you have to do is type in your measurement. In this case, I needed to remove a quarter of an inch from my measurement, and I couldn't figure out how to do that. But this app was just super easy to use. I punched in the measurement, and it told me exactly what I needed to cut at. So definitely check that app out if you're looking into wanting something to help you just get measurements right, um, and if you're gonna be tackling a project like this one. So after I had all of my pieces cut for the frame of the base, I'm focusing on the legs now. And you guys, I do have to say, you have to be very careful when you're doing this. Um, I couldn't get the angle that I wanted on these legs um, with just moving around the saw. So I had to do it myself and just kind of clamp the wood down. But it's very dangerous to do this, so you either have help or just be very, very careful. I cannot stress that enough. If you are wanting a in-depth tutorial on how to achieve this wood base, I highly recommend checking out DIY Wife here on YouTube. I followed her video tutorial and it really did help me out. I may have watched it about 500 times <laughs> to get this done, but it really did help me out because she goes over her entire process. So it's time to make our pocket holes on the wood so that we can go ahead and put this base together. And I picked up a Craig jig. I got the R3 model from Amazon and the matching clamp that goes to it. And all these products are going to be linked in my bio. They're going to be in my Amazon shop so you guys can check them out. Um, but I've been wanting to get one of these because it just makes things so much easier. And especially for this base, it's almost a must to get this. 
So after watching a tutorial real quick on YouTube on how to get set up, I actually found it really easy to do. And I definitely see myself using this Craig jig a lot more for furniture repairs. So something that I highly, highly recommend you purchasing. Now that we got that base off, I'm going to go ahead and work on putting this whole thing together. I forgot to mention that I'm using poplar wood. I really wanted to use the red oak that DIY wife recommended, but unfortunately the sizes that I needed were not available at my local Lowe's. So I chose poplar, which is also a hardwood and this is what it looks like all built i'm honestly so proud of this i can't even believe that i made that <laughs> so i'm gonna go ahead and start working on the piece itself and like i mentioned the top was pretty damaged um there's one spot specifically that had water damage so i'm just using my rts 400 sander from fest tool to just sand down that water bubble um, texture that you get when you have water damage and then I'm just gonna go ahead and prime the whole thing sometimes I prime before all of my repairs are done just because you get to see more imperfections when it's been primed so that's what I'm gonna do I went ahead and cleaned it and I'm just gonna go ahead and use one of my favorite shellac based primers which is the Zinzer bin primer and you can purchase this at any local Home Depot or Lowe's or hardware store. Um, and then of course I have it linked in my Amazon shop if you guys are interested in purchasing it through there. that I am using to apply my primer is a microfiber mini roller from Sherwin-Williams and the reason I like this one is because I feel like it doesn't leave behind any type of texture or bubbles or anything like that and they're pretty inexpensive they come in a two pack for around four or five dollars or so and I just love them and the way I clean my rollers or brushes whenever I am using bin primer is to use either a 50 50 mix of pure ammonia and water or sometimes i just go in straight with the pure ammonia and you can follow the directions on the can it does say to use ammonia for cleanup um but it does clean up really well and as you can see this roller was had already been used and i think this is probably the last time i was going to use it because i've used it quite a few times already and it was time <laughs> but like i said the rollers are super inex inexpensive and if you just clean them then you can use them multiple times so now that this piece has officially graduated to my spray booth we can go ahead and start putting the drawers back in and taping them off to make sure that we don't get any overspray on the sides. When I was putting the drawers in, I did notice that the top was hitting a little bit more than I wanted it to. So I took my sander with an 80 grit and started sanding down the top of this just to create a little bit more wiggle room so that they can slide in and out more smoothly. In my recent video on spring, I went over how I tape off the sides of my drawers. This is what I have found to be the least expensive for me as of right now is just putting about two pieces of tape all across the sides and then sliding them back in and it really helps with not getting any overspray 
on your sides of the drawers so I'm using frog tape it's one of my favorite tapes to use when I am painting furniture so definitely try this technique out um, rather than spending a lot of money on buying plastic and stuff like that So I'm going to be using silk paint again and this time I decided to mix up a custom made color and this is just 50-50 black sands and wharf and it's just going to give me a very nice deep almost charcoal gray color um, and as you can see here I am sifting my paint as usual as I recommended in my last video and I'm just going to be using my Wagner Flexio 5000 to go ahead and spray this onto my piece and link my video so that you guys can check out that video on how to spray furniture if you guys have any further questions when it comes to that So while my first coat of paint is drying, I'm going back to working on my base. I'm actually using a wood conditioner by Minwax and I'm going to go ahead and just apply that throughout the entire base. The can says to let it sit for anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes and then wipe it back a little bit. So that's what I did and then I'm going to go ahead and stain it. You guys, when I stained this piece after doing the wood conditioner, I realized that it was applying so, so blotchy. And I was a little disappointed because I was following all the steps properly. And as you can see here, there was just blotches everywhere. So what did I have to, to end up doing? Yeah, I sanded it back down. <laughs> so after consulting with a few of my furniture friends, I went ahead and just decided to go ahead and sand it back down. And I actually picked up another stain in another color. I kind of changed my mind on the color. And I went with a Verithane stain and that worked out so much better for me. Now here is a huge, huge tip. And this is something that I learned by watching a few YouTube videos while i was frustrated because of my blotchiness i was recommended to use shellac first before using your stain don't ask me how this works but it did <laughs> i went ahead and did one coat of shellac throughout the entire base and once that was dry i went ahead and stained it with the verithane um, wood stain and it applied so beautifully so evenly this is going to definitely be my go-to method of staining wood. And just like that, we have a beautifully stained wood base. And that is it you guys. This is what it looks like after I went ahead and put it all together. I am so proud of myself for building this. I cannot believe I actually made that. Um, if you like this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Definitely follow me on Facebook and Instagram so you can check out all of the behind the scenes. And I will catch you in my next video.